So I titled the lecture last Thursday as um, Early Particle Physics. So what we are doing today is sort of as close to current particle physics as possible. But we are still, uh, I still need to introduce a few more things in a more historical context. Because um, if I threw everything at you all at once, this is essentially what I would have. Uh, let's see, standard model poster. So it's actually a version of the poster that's on the cabinet there that you may have seen. There's an organization, I think this is the one, CPEP. They are the ones that make this. Last refresh of their poster was in 2014 or 15, depending on how well, long after he exposed on discovery they did it. So the, our current knowledge of particle physics, it's quite a bit. So if I just threw this uh, um, at you all at once, then there's a lot of nuances and material there that you are simply going to miss. <laughs> That's really why I'm trying to, kind of trying to introduce in a more historical context. Um, so I have a little bit of that left. We are eventually getting to this. Um, the six element, six, no, 12 elementary fermions. <laughs> That's what we are getting to eventually in about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. But um, so, so let's uh, um, start out with where we stood last time, last Thursday. Uh, the list of particles you have been introduced to, to so far. Uh, which are not these, once again, as I kind of mentioned the last time, the only, I guess as of last time, you know, uh, well, <laughs> let's just start out with what you definitely know. You definitely know electron, right? And you definitely know muon. I at least mentioned the muon, what the mass of muon was. And what I will say is, you kind of know these two neutrinos that are listed here, but you will notice that your textbook doesn't call, not textbook, this poster, which is the most up to date, it doesn't call this electron neutrino, it doesn't call this muon neutrino. It's because of the developments that happened uh, that was concluded around 2001 about neutrino oscillation. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> so you kind of know these two neutrinos, but not the way to describe it on this poster. Um, and I guess that's it. Uh, we haven't talked about any of the quarks yet. So you know of particles that are made up of up and down quark, but we kind of have to introduce those and that's what we'll spend the time doing. Um, if we are interested in some reading material that's more coherently presented than uh, like a poster that throws everything at you, one thing that I can tell you is the the particle physics lecture notes, the optional lecture notes which were posted. There's a couple that are titled under particle Jew. It's the kind of still historical introduction to all the particles that were being discovered and how that led to the development of theories that are summarized in this poster. So let's start out with what we still, what, what you know, particles that you know about. So I guess I can call it, uh, known elementary particles. Well, I think to be perfectly honest, I really should have put a quotation mark around elementary because some of the particles on this list won't actually be elementary, at least the way we believe them. Um, I can start actually categorizing them. So, you know about uh, leptons, the lightest particles, and these are actually elementary as far as we know. So we have uh, introduced electron, muon, and we introduced why neutrino was necessary. In the beta decay, unless you had a neutrino, you couldn't conserve energy and momentum and conserve angular momentum. For all those things, neutrinos are necessary. And for the time being, I'm going to call it electron neutrino. Uh, because we are, for, for my purposes, we are still in the 1930s, 1940s. People thought uh, neutrinos are still massless. Um, so we know these, 
And I guess there's one more generation, as you can see here, but we don't know anything about them yet, so we won't talk about those. Um, and you know baryons. Um, wait, actually, um, well, yeah, you, you know baryons, but let me leave a little bit of a gap between leptons and baryons because of what we talked about towards the end of last Thursday. So what, what particles do we know that we are calling baryons? These are some of your very familiar particles. Protons, yeah, protons and neutrons. And those are the only two baryons that you know about. You don't know any other baryons yet. All right, and last time we introduced pions. Um, those fall in the category of meson because when you look at their weight, it becomes kind of in between. So you have mesons that are called uh, pions. And I guess last time I didn't quite, well, I mentioned it, but I didn't, I guess I didn't explain it, but then there's nothing to explain. There are three of these. There's a, uh, there's a neutral pion, there's positive pion, and there's negative pion. Don't ask me why there are three. They discovered the three of them. And they're all around a similar mass. You can actually see it here. I think I can actually use this to uh, use the particle data group website. They have an interactive tables. So this is probably what I should have done last time instead of me looking through this booklet, which you don't know what I'm looking at. Um, so mesons, uh, yeah. So um, the particles we were talking about last time, they are the uh, lightest of the mesons. So you have, um, the charged pions, pi plus and minus, they are antiparticles of each other. And uh, charged pion mass is 100, about 140 MeV. And they also discovered another particle that they ended up calling neutral pion. And you can see that its mass is very similar in the range. So that's why they called it neutral pion, because they uh, felt based on the similarity of the masses that before we knew anything about this, they thought this was probably somehow related to this other uh, pion that, that's the Yukawa's meson. This is the particle that mediates the strong nuclear force. Okay. Um, so we know those particles. Oh, and the, I couldn't forget the, um, this important particle. Um, we have bosons, or I guess um, it comes by different the titles. Let me call this uh, force bosons. So you have photon, which mediates electromagnetic interaction. And oh, I guess this technically goes under force boson, but <laughs> I'm putting it here because later we understand these to be not elementary bosons, but it's something else. And uh, we will introduce additional force mediators that we will, um, uh, that's in the standard model. So I think, yeah, I think this is where we left off last Thursday, right? Did I forget any particles that we have mentioned so far? No, everything good? Yes. Okay. So um, 